Welcome to a demo and presentation on Arna Network's GPU orchestration and management software. If you are an NVIDIA Cloud Partner, an NCP, or an AI Cloud Provider, we help you build a hyperscaler-grade GPU cloud with multi-tenancy and isolation. With the growth of machine learning and Gen AI, there has been an exponential growth of AI Cloud and NCP providers. This recent slide from Jensen Huang, CEO of NVIDIA, shows how many NCPs have signed up with NVIDIA just recently. If you are an NCP or an AI Cloud provider, you are probably thinking, do I need to worry about GPU as a service, digital services? I know that AWS, Microsoft, Google, Lambda Labs, et cetera, provide an on-demand self-service GPU as a service offering, but do I need to do that? Let's look at the answer. This two by two grid shows large customers and small customers with long-term static needs and short-term dynamic needs. Large customers that have long-term static needs don't need a digital service. GPU rental is adequate, which is basically traditional hosting. However, the other three cells require digital services, GPU as a service. If there are small customers that have long-term needs, it's too labor intensive to manually provision each one of them. If there are large customers who have short-term training needs, like one month, two months, or they have inferencing needs, then again, manually provisioning them is, is very difficult and you do need a digital service. And finally, small customers that have short-term needs, of course, it needs to be fully automated with a digital service. What this means is that traditionally hosted GPU rental only business will actually result in a negative ROI because of a large number of unused GPU cycles. Dynamically orchestrated and managed GPU as a service, digital service, is required to supplement the GPU rental business for full utilization and for getting a positive ROI. GPU as a service providers have some requirements. They need software to convert a piece of hardware into a service. Specifically, GPU as a service providers require hyperscaler grade self-service on demand GPU as a service, which could be virtual machines, bare metal instances, Kubernetes, with full isolation of GPU, CPU, network, and storage. Uh, GPU as a service providers are unable to find a standard solution. VMware and OpenStack do solve this problem of multi-tenancy and isolation for the CPU world, and to a degree, they, they address GPUs as well, but they don't really solve the problem for the full GPU ecosystem. GPU as a service providers have bespoke configuration needs, they want, might want to change uh, networking. They might want to change storage. And finally, GPU as a service providers, if they do have any resources that, uh, that are available, developers, then they want to direct those precious resources to platform as a service and software as a service layers, which means model as a service, RAG, vector databases, LLM ops. Instead of spending those precious resources on the infrastructure as service layer, which is provisioning of GPU instances. So the right hand side summarizes it. At the bottom, you have the GPU hardware. Above that, you have low level hardware provisioning software, such as Redfish or NVIDIA Base Command Manager. And above that, you have a gap. And that's the gap that we as Arna Networks fill. And that's the demo we will show you. And that software also needs to expose APIs, northbound APIs, which we'll talk about. If you double click, what are these GPU as a service gaps? They are in four categories. First and foremost is instance creation. Those instances, GPU instances could be virtual machine, they could be bare metal as a service, or they could be third-party container as a service or Kubernetes add-on. Uh, you need full multi-tenancy role-based role -based access control, RBAC, and as we have discussed, isolation in terms of network, InfiniBand storage, GPU, and CPU. The tenants need observability of their GPU instances. Next, we need northbound APIs. 
the tenants or users need to be able to manage the lifecycle of their instances, create instances, terminate them, et cetera. The GPU as a service provider needs APIs to the BSS system for billing and tenant management. They also need APIs to the OSS system for global monitoring. So global observability is different than tenant observability. The tenant needs to see their own instance, GPU instance, while the GPU as a service provider needs to see the status of the entire hardware infrastructure that they own. Last but not the least, to get a positive ROI, any unused GPU cycle must be monetized. Anything that's left idling is basically increasing the return on investment by that much more. The right-hand side summarizes what we just discussed. The hardware, hardware provisioning, and global observability comes from vendors such as NVIDIA. Uh, it could come from others. The operating system, KVM, and Kubernetes layers come from third parties as well. But the GPU drivers and the operators have to be provisioned, and those are gaps that we fill. We also fill the above gaps in terms of multi-tenancy, tenant observability, instance creation and management, and northbound APIs and GUI. If you go in, in even the next level of detail, what are the high-level requirements for an NCP persona in terms of whether they go through the GUI or the API? So the first thing the NCP admin needs to do is to create enterprise admin users, so create tenants. So once a tenant signs up, this needs to be done. Next, they need to be able to onboard and provision the global GPU infrastructure. If they have you know, thousands of GPU instances, they need to be able to onboard all of those. They need to be able to monitor the global inventory and infrastructure. There needs to be a ticketing system in case there's any problem, uh, uh, billing reporting, OSS reporting that we talked about, and a dashboard that shows all the tenants. So they need to be able to see the, all the tenants and what's going on with them. The GPU as a service provider's end customer has slightly different requirements. The end customer can be split into two personas, the enterprise admin and the enterprise user. The enterprise admin needs to be able to log into the NCP portal, create groups. These could be business units, departments, and users, create permissions for all these users, create an enterprise-wide catalog of machine learning applications, and then monitor the entire infrastructure. The enterprise user needs to be able to provision and manage GPU instances, virtual machines, bare metal, container as a service. And the next two are outside the scope of the infrastructure as a service layer, but they're listed for completeness. So with something like Run AI, NVIDIA's Run AI, Enterprise users can create and submit jobs and monitor those results. And last but not the least is implicit, the ability to provide isolation between the GPU instances. This is GPU, CPU, network, InfiniBand, and storage isolation. These requirements can be solved by the ARNA Multi-Cluster Orchestration Platform, or AMCOP, which is an open source orchestration and management platform based on Kubernetes. AMCOP 4.x is now available for production use. There are other presentations that explain this block diagram. So in interest of time, we are not going to do that today. But in terms of functionality, AMCOP can orchestrate and manage virtual machines and bare metal instances across tens of thousands of GPU sites or factories. AMCOP can orchestrate and manage the Kubernetes layer, overlay networks and applications on top of this infrastructure. It can provide monitoring with open and closed loop automation active and available inventory management. AMCOP 4.x is based on proven open source projects, specifically Kubernetes. RBAC role-based access control and multi-tenancy is baked in. The GUI is skinnable and there are northbound APIs available per use case. This shows a more detailed diagram of the solution. So at the bottom, you have the GPU hardware. It could be NVIDIA, DGX, HGX, MGX systems. On top of that is a hardware provisioning layer, such as Redfish or NVIDIA Base Command Manager. On top of that, AMCOP provides the multi-tenancy and isolation layer. 
in terms of multi-tenant instance creation and lifecycle management, GPU, CPU, network, storage, isolation, usage metrics, and finally northbound GUI and APIs. The APIs can go to the user in terms of cloud-like APIs to manage instances, or they can go to the OSS BSS system. Now we are going to get into the demo. The objective of the demo is to show three personas, the NCP or the GPU as a service admin and two tenants, tenant one and tenant two. And what the NCP admin is going to do is to onboard hardware, onboard GPU hardware, create two tenants. Tenant one will then create two GPU instances. Tenant two will do the same, create two GPU instances. And then we will show the observability part and last but not the least, we will show that there is isolation. Uh, we will show that the instances of, of tenant two can talk to each other, but instances of tenant two cannot talk to instances of tenant one. And implicitly, we will also show you GPU, CPU, uh, InfiniBand isolation, uh, and just give an overview of storage isolation. The sequence of the demo is we'll have a pre-demo setup We'll have NCP admin tasks, tenant one tasks, tenant two tasks, and then we'll verify isolation. Specifically in the pre-demo setup, we will show you that AMCOP is already installed. The GPU server is already provisioned with the operating system and the right drivers. This is very time consuming, so we are not going to show this in the demo. Step two, the NCP logs in and creates two tenants. In terms of the roadmap, uh, this will be done by the BSS using northbound APIs. We will show how to onboard a pre-provisioned GPU server and check that it shows up in the global inventory dashboard. Step three, tenant one logs in. Tenant one creates two GPU instances. These are virtual machines, Kata containers. And we will also show you the tenant observability or the tenant dashboard. Tenant two does the same. And the last or the fifth step is we will SSH into VMs of one VM of tenant two and show that it can communicate to tenant two's first VM, but it cannot communicate to any of the VMs of tenant one. We will also show you InfiniBand isolation settings. With that, please enjoy the demo. First, we log in as the NVIDIA Cloud Partner, the NCP admin, or the GPU as a service admin. And as the admin, the first thing we do is add hardware to our inventory. We are going to onboard a already provisioned MGX GH200 Grace Hopper server. So let's go ahead and onboard it. And now you see that we can view the hardware inventory. At, at the top, there's a summary. And further down, you can see details of each of the nodes that form the GPU cloud for the NCP. Now we create two NCP tenants. So these are the actual users of the cloud, the GPU cloud. So we just created the first tenant. Now we'll create the second tenant. And now we are going to log out as the admin and log back in as tenant one. And as tenant one, we will be creating two instances, two GPU instances, and showing you how that works and how we can monitor them, uh, etc. So we log in as the tenant. And now we are going to provision the first GPU instance. So we give it a name, we pick the flavor, H100, and the rest of the parameters are very similar to a public cloud, vCPUs, uh, memory, operating system, etc. And once you make those choices, the, the node comes up, the GPU instance comes up. Now we'll create the second one. So we're picking Ubuntu 20.04, again an H100. So that got created. This is um, done on a live environment, so you can see how quickly they come up. Now we'll look at observability. First, let's look at the network observability for node one. So here you see the public IPv4 address, the InfiniBand P key, 
private IPv4 address, and the VXLAN ID or VNI. And we can see additional KPIs on this page. So you can see all the parameters pertaining to the GPU. And now we are going to log out as tenant one. So let's log back in as tenant two. Tenant two is going to do exactly the same. We are going to create two GPU instances. And um, what's happening underneath is Kata containers are getting created for each instance with the right GPU allocation. And we are getting full CPU isolation through Kata containers, confidential computing. We are getting full GPU isolation through MIG. The network isolation happens using VXLAN. InfiniBand using PKey, and we also have storage isolation. So all these instances across tenants are fully isolated. This is a very important point to be able to run a multi-tenant GPU as a service cloud offering. So we've created node three and four. So node one and two belong to tenant one, node three and four belong to tenant two. We'll see the observability aspects again. So KPIs, network parameters, Now what we are going to do is we are going to log into node four, which is the second GPU instance for tenant two. So we are going to log into it and then try and communicate with node three, which also belongs to tenant two. It's the first GPU instance of tenant two. So since both the nodes belong to tenant two, they should be able to communicate. So let's verify that. And they do indeed communicate. Now we are going to try and communicate with a node that belongs to tenant one. And obviously, that's uh, that should not work. That would be it would be a huge no-no if that if that communication happened. So let's go ahead and confirm that the communication across tenants actually fails. So we get the IP address for node one, which belongs to tenant one, and try and communicate with it. And as expected, the communication fails. And this shows how we created instances and how they're fully isolated. Thank you for watching our demo and presentation. If this is of interest to you, please do connect with us. Thank you.